I'm Jamie. And we're here at Medford Health Matters Community Asset Builder Awards. We're here at Medford City Hall, and this is an award ceremony dedicated to the organizations that help to bring health and wellness to Medford. And stay tuned, Mayor McGlynn is kicking off the ceremonies, and there's more to come, so watch Medford Cable News and see what's going on. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm here with Brooke Johns, one of the organizers of Medford Health Matters, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what this is about. Absolutely. So Medford Health Matters is a nonprofit or organization here in the city, and we're holding a recognition and community asset builder award reception. Basically, we are recognizing organizations and individuals for their contributions to making Medford a healthier community. Um, organizations are really the foundations uh, for, for healthy youth development, along with parents and all these other um, assets that we can give to our youth to make sure we ensure that they're healthy individuals. It looks like a pretty good turnout so far tonight. I know it's starting to get, you know, people coming in, we're about to get rolling here, so uh, we look forward to this. Thank you. Thanks for being here. We're really excited. Thank you.
since most of you know who at least some of these people are, um, you can see that we have a wide range of organizations represented and areas of interest and concern represented. It's a great board, and um, we welcome your participation. There's lots of ways to get involved with Milford Health Canada. Just corner one of us and ask them, and we'll send you one. So um, the other two people who need to
and that's how we were able to get the funding. Normally, they go, the funding primarily goes to um, community health, um, what was called Chanag, but we were fortunate to get the funds directly. And so I was going to talk a little bit about some of the things that we are doing with it. So the focus is on health in a very broad way. And now I have to turn the page. talk and read and hold microphone and turn pages at the same time. Um, we are, what we needed to do in order to receive the money was to do a needs assessment. And so we, uh, working with a consultant, we also did a strategic plan this past year. We, working with a consultant, we came to the decision that we wanted to focus on middle school age youth and our elders. We felt those were two populations within the city of Medford that were um, underserved. Um, and so we put together, uh, we started out by doing a listening session. We brought the uh, school, the middle school principals and the nurses in and found out what some of the issues were for middle schoolers. We also conducted a um, listening session with members of a sort of broader community of providers who provide services for elders within the city of Bedford to get a sense of what some of those issues are. And of course, the, the big issue in elders is that we are all going to become them one day. Um, and for some of us, it's sooner than for others. And as I think a lot of you know, the numbers of people that are retiring because of the baby boomers, there's some, some phenomenal one. I, I can't even remember the number, but it's a huge number of people. I heard today that um, in, I think it was in, a couple of years ago, one in five people was over 60. Five and in, in 2030 will be, I mean, one in eight and in 2030 will be one in five, will be over the age of 65. So it's a growing population. We, uh, because we don't run programs, what we did was subgrant the funds that we received from Mount Auburn. And we went through a process of putting out a request for proposals, and we received a number of different proposals, um, and have decided, and then decided to fund two for middle school youth. One is a program uh, that Hallmark Health put on and continues to put on, they've done their first phase, called Healthy Kids in Motion, which is designed to reach all sixth graders in the city. Um, and it's a nutrition and an exercise program. And it, it, it's, um, it was very successful. They reached about se between 65 and 75 children, or young, young people, I should say. Um, and then we also um, awarded a grant to Marie Cassidy for Medford Family Network. And the first, she's just got her program started in February, right? And beginning with a program called In the Middle About Bullying, which is certainly a very timely issue with Dr. Lonnie Carton, who's, we're pleased to say, is with us this evening. I'm sure many of you have, are familiar with her. Um, you did what, the WBC program? Years ago, this is a number of years ago, so I think many people are familiar with you. We also um, have subcontracted with Sharon Kennedy, who um, is a storyteller, and she will be doing a program, an intergenerational program, bringing um, young people and elders together to tell stories about Medford, and she hopes to get started, I believe, in April. One of the other things, as I said, it's a broad definition of health, and one of the other things that we're going to be doing is working with the arts community to, um, as, as Lawson has done, to have all of the switch boxes, there were 29 of them in the city, so you will be seeing people out uh, painting switch boxes, it's perfectly appropriate. All of the themes will be around health, um, and so that's, that's an exciting way to get a message out about the importance of, of nutrition and good health and environmental health. It's a very broad topic, so we, we're looking forward to seeing what those proposals will be. We expect to be issuing um, RFPs again. Um, probably word will go out in maybe April or May, um, because we want people who may have an idea for a summer project to have the opportunity to apply, or for something that will start in the fall. And uh, so certainly if anybody is interested, please let us know about that. I also just wanted to, um, two other things. The, we have a subgroup that um, is working on health, dis on health disparities. The Human Rights Commission came to us and said that they were really concerned about this issue, and so we have a, a really an ad hoc group that's working on that, and 
and we showed the film Unnatural Causes um, in November and have decided to focus on these, we have three subfoods and decided to focus on nutrition again as a um, food security is obviously an enormous issue. Um, and then some of the other things we've done is um, we certainly have tried to get out to as many health fairs as we possibly can, get out in the community and partner with as many groups that are interested in health. So it's been a great year for us. We've had some wonderful new members join the board, a lot of new energy, and um, look for more things to come. Thank you.
we're looking at um, doing a parent survey. We'd like to have a parent survey. Find out where they're at because they're believing they're on marijuana, alcohol, prescription drugs. What do they know? What do they need to know? What would they like? We're also doing such community wide education. So we're literally out there talking with as many people as we can, providing any sort of resource that we possibly can. If you have this question, let us know. We'll figure it out. If we don't know the answer, I'm going to figure it out for you. That's what I'm here for. Community organizing. Well, I think everyone kind of knows what community organizing is, but essentially, we are doing a lot of legwork. We're going around and we're going to talk to the Boys and Girls Club. We're going to talk over to the high school. We're going to talk. So we're telling everybody what everybody else is doing. Hopefully, they'll talk to each other, and then we don't have to talk about it anymore. And then also, we're providing resources. We're providing resources to the community. We have a pocket resource at that that we just created so the police, so the police can hand them off to folks if they see someone is in need and they've just addressed an issue in their home. They're able to hand something right over to them. We're bringing awareness to the issue, obviously. We're doing that through our social marketing campaign, but we're also doing it through websites. We're trying to do it on TV, ultimately. We want to get our PSAs out there more. We want to do whatever we can to make sure that no one forgets that this is actually a very serious situation. And then finally, let's talk about something happy for a change. We're doing health promotion, okay? Health promotion, we want to talk about how can we be healthy. Let's stop talking about you shouldn't do this. Let's tell you what you can do. Let's give you some tools for your toolbox that you know what to do for the parents and for the kids. Kids need to know that they have other opportunities than drinking in the woods on a Friday night. That's something that we should all be letting them know that they should be doing. Okay. Moving right along. I need to thank a few people because we wouldn't be nearly as successful if it weren't for these folks here tonight. Nancy Camp of Boston. She came to us in a, in, a, in, a, in a fateful moment, and she's just helped us launch ourselves into getting businesses involved. She helped us on our Alcohol Awareness Month last year, getting people to put up placards and say, Team Medford supports Alcohol Awareness Month. So she's helped us do a lot of stuff in that way. Elise Castro helped us put together focus groups for both of the most of the resilient community as well as the Haitian community. And Elise Castro has been in Immaculate, they're here tonight as a result of his work for doing that. Uh, Laura Shapiro, she's been working with her peers to teach them about what is the dangers of these substances and how they affect their students and how, as school professionals, can we work to get they work together to get that job done. We have Elaine Di Batista, who has been amazing to me for the last three and a half years. Thank you very much for helping us get into the schools and getting acclimated to who's out there and what's going on. And she truly is uh, a wealth of knowledge when it comes. Um, Wendy Horn is a guidance counselor. She was the first person they contacted me this year, and we've made some major friendships over in the guidance department this year at Robin, and I'm just very excited about that. Um, Jean Feely is a mother who came to us and she wanted to know more about She's there for us. She's been talking to us and coming to our meetings and just being a part of the group. We have Immaculate, thank you very much. She's allowed us to get some youth. Immaculate Pierre, she's amazing. She's allowed us to have some youth to do PSA every year. Um, and then, of course, we had the focus group, but it's just so much. Thank you. Um, Valerie David, Wendy Chandler, Stacey Moore. I'm not going to cry right now, but if I could, I would tell you. They have changed my life forever. They are, um, sorry. They're the youth advisors for Team Cab. They had worked with me for three years, doing phenomenal work with these kids. I'm sorry.
we need to start early, and Amy recognized that, and she and Mr. Edwards have worked together to form this group of a really small, I think it's about 20 kids, give and take, and that's really phenomenal to see them all get involved. And then finally, Team Cat. I have two members of my Team Cat over here, um, Aragi Makara and Principal Makara. They have a video that's playing over there if you want to take a look at that. But they've really, um, they've done some great work. Aragi came to us in sixth grade, and he was ready to roll and tell the community all about what, what it means to be healthy and happy. And Crystal, smart, quick, amazing. Thank you for coming. And above the influence too, since I don't see any of them here right now, but I do. Oh, I do right here, we have one, but we'll talk about them later. Um, but the high school students have been doing great kind of work too. They've done it, all these PSAs, they've done all this um, work on a texting campaign that we've been working on for the last couple of years. Okay, let me get down to it. I'm not good. Here we go. What are the assets anyway? Supporting developmental assets from the Search Institute. This is a model that is really talks about, let's start focusing on the positivity within our children. Let's focus on that, heart, you know, harness that, find out what their assets are, and build on those, and then ask them if they can build on more, okay? It's a responsibility, not just on us, but on them too. And how do they tend to do that? External assets, internal assets. The external assets, that's all of you. That's why we're here today. It's their environment that makes so, uh, such a difference to them. It's the support that we give. It's the empowerment that we allow them to feel, that we know that they're capable of doing things. Boundaries, expectations, we need to set high expectations for these kids. They will rise to meet them. Let's, let's start, let's make sure that we're doing that. Constructive use of time, how are they using their time? Hope they're not doing terrible things. <laughs> uh, internal assets, learning, commitment to learning, positive values, social competency, and a positive identity. These are all really important things that make us all happy, healthy human beings, and all of the adults can check out these apps. There's details about it in the back there. And, and you know, it, it's really a, a wonderful thing to get initiated in this community. That's why we have these asset builder awards. Because we want to recognize that adults are building assets in you. That's why we're here. So I think if you want to get in contact with us, you are more than welcome to. We'd love to talk to you. We are now located over in the side office over here. You can come by and knock on our door and say, hey, Brooke and I look. And I thank you very much for letting me talk forever.
evening, everyone. Uh, I'll be given the distinct honor of actually handing out the Asset Silver Awards for the Adult and Youth um, Asset Inventors. But when you get an attorney and a microphone and a card at home, you got to hear a few words. So I'll, hold, I'll have the suspense go on a little bit longer. I want to share something with you. And I'm going to call you my Inventors Health Status family. We're so excited for many of you to come up. But I want to share something with you. It's a secret. I'm selfish about Medford. Um, I've been a longtime resident. I grew up in Medford. Uh, in my youth, I had the opportunity to be a participant on many youth sports throughout the city. When I got to high school, I participated on many different sports teams. It is those connections through those sports teams that remain my strongest connections in life today. As an adult, I choose to live in Medford and raise my family. I have a daughter, she's nine years old, her name is Greta. I want her to have the same opportunities that I have growing up in Bedford and more. I want her to be able to live a long, healthy life with many opportunities throughout the community. And that's why I spend some of my time working with this great board and mental health status so we can do what we can to encourage healthy living in Medford. And we take the time, we think it's important because all of you individuals doing what you do every day that makes Medford special, makes Medford healthy. So we want to take a little bit of time to recognize all of you for the way that you make Medford special. So I want to make sure you all give yourself another round of applause for that. for the other members of the board because they are as committed to, as I am to doing what we can to encourage the healthy living in that in, in Medford. Okay, I've kept everyone in suspense long enough. Um, the winner of the Adult Award for Outstanding Community Asset Builder of the Year is Brahman Smith King. She was nominated by the Grace Episcopal Church, and she is, as, as she is an exemplary model of many qualities, such as motivating others to contribute, helping and supporting others, and standing up for beliefs while illustrating empathy and sensitivity towards all. She has led, by example, by promoting healthy living and ensuring that Grace and the larger community actively engage in issues of health and wellness. It was through her passion that Grace Church organized Let's Move Medford this past summer. In addition, leadership and dedication to all children in the community, particularly the underprivileged, have inspired many within the Grace community, tough community, and larger segments of Medford. We are pleased to recognize, recognize Robin Smith King as the Outstanding Community Asset Builder of the Year. Um, thank you for your her contribute for our contributions to Medford and to you. Positive and responsible behavior, and is the first to help and support younger students. 
and has a strong sense of self. Tony does not bow to peer pressure or bullying. She stands up for others and exemplifies pride in knowing and loving herself. Her leadership will continue to teach others how to be likable, strong, smart young adults. We are pleased to recognize her as the outstanding youth builder of the year. Thank you. Medford Cable News, and we're here at the Community Asset Builder Awards. It just wrapped, and I'm here with John Falco. How are you? Good. How are you? It was, I'm great. Um, this evening was amazing. I'm like, wow, a lot of people came out, and a lot of people got awards. How do you feel about that? It was a great night. Uh, it was great to see uh, everyone here to support uh, Medford Health Matters and to support the recipients. Uh, Medford Health Matters is a great organization. They've done a lot of great work in the community, especially with the school system. They've done a lot of work with our youngest students right up to our high school students and promoting uh, healthy lifestyles and uh, you know, uh, just teaching kids about the dangers of uh, uh, alcohol use and uh, marijuana and illegal drug use. Uh, so it's a great, great, uh, great organization. They've done a lot of good work. I agree. And for the people that weren't able to make it tonight to this great event, what do you think is the main takeaway? You would say oh that uh Bedford is a great place to live uh, a great place to work and play uh they promoted um uh, what they've done to the community and, and what they've uh, programs they've sponsored and uh, it was a lot great to learn a lot about um uh the different programs that they offer and the different groups that they interact with so uh it was it was uh, educational and it was great to see the uh the award winners and to see them uh, celebrate uh, their achievements that's great well thank you for talking to me john thank you very much yep. have a good night all right, so we have a little guest entertainment here tonight. Um, they are from Medford High School. We have three lovely gentlemen who have been practicing ballet for the last 16 years, and they are thrilled to perform, which could possibly be one of their last performances. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Jason Trin, Nahim Kamal, and Tom Nguyen. Welcome. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm Jamie. And I'm Faven. And we're wrapping up tonight's award ceremony here for Medford Health Matters at Medford City Hall. It was a wonderful night. It was great turnout. And the people of Medford are just so involved, and it was wonderful. Oh, it was great. How about those break dancers? They were amazing. That was why I do that stuff right out. I right after I get out of bed in the morning I was every day. on the sidelines. Yeah. Great. It was, it was great. But thank you very much for joining us, and we hope to see you again very soon. Bye, Medford. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have a good night.